Welcome back. I'm Barry Craig. Seventy years ago, Paducah was part of what was said to have been the greatest natural disaster in American history to that point. It was the Great Ohio River Flood of 1937. With us today to discuss the flood and Paducah's part in it is John Robertson, author, historian, professor. Welcome to the program. Thank you. Let's begin with this question, how bad was it? Well, the Red Cross did a follow-up report on the 37 flood. And in that report, it says that uh, this was the greatest disaster that had hit the United States. In fact, uh, it was, uh, they took the two major disasters in the 20th century, that is the 27 flood on the Mississippi River the lower Mississippi. Now that's the flood that wiped out Columbus, wasn't it? Uh, forced Columbus to go to the, to the Well, river. it was, yeah, one of the, the factors that did mm -hmm. that and the changing of the channel in 1917. Mm -hmm. Combine those two. Uh, but this is the one that uh, they dynamited the levees above New Orleans to prevent uh, the city from suffering. And uh, as a result, killed a whole lot of people without warning. So it was a devastating event. Uh, but the Red Cross said that the 37 flood was worse than that, plus the Great Dust Bowl mm. put the two together. In fact, uh, in their report, they mentioned that uh, uh, in a short period of time there, uh, something more than, uh, well, uh, enough water hit the country uh, to go th uh, maybe 11.2 inches from all the land from Louisville on down to Cairo. You also have to remember that as far north as Harrisburg, Illinois, the flood waters reached that. So the river was just it's unbelievably like wide at the time, mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. Some of the statistics locally that I gleaned from uh, one of the historical markers here in town, uh, over 90% of the city was inundated, 27,000 people were evacuated, and damage exceeded $22 million. Uh, that's pretty remarkable for that period. Well, uh, in the Red Cross report, they noted that in the Ohio Valley, a million people were homeless. Uh, property damage equals the equivalent of seven billion dollars in today's dollars. Uh, mm. You know, uh, taking into account for inflation, and it killed a proper 400 people. Mm -hmm. So this was a devastating experience. Mm -hmm. In Paducah today, you can still see surviving buildings, can you not? From oh the, yes. From the flood. Uh, tell us about some of the things. If, if somebody wanted to drive around Paducah, hopefully on on, on dry pavement. Uh, what would you see that, that are notable survivors from the flood? Well, the, uh, it depends on where you're coming into Paducah. If you come in from the west, as you get on Broadway, uh, across from the old Coca-Cola plant, you are uh, at the westernmost limit of the flood. And you go on down, you hit the, well, the Ritz Hotel. Mm -hmm still in existence. Eight feet of water there. And, it, and it's also 22 blocks from the river. They ran steamboats up Broadway f as far as uh, mm -hmm. there. Now and there's all, a monument, what, on Jefferson that shows Jefferson. the, uh, that's, mm -hmm. the ex that's the high water mark of the flood or thereabouts. Well, that's would, to commemorate it. Right. The high water mark was a little further on out. Closer actually. to the railroad yeah. overpass mm -hmm. there. That's incredible. They built uh, an extension uh, so that they could, people could come as far as they could in the boats. And then, you have to remember, this was in the middle of the winter time. Right. Not only did we have flood, but we had bitter cold. And just before the flood, we had the great freeze where uh, uh, ice just encoded everything. And they talked about it uh, sounded like a battle fire, you know, just limbs crashing mm -hmm. due to the ice. And that knocked down most of the, uh, the telephone lines. And one of the things about this flood, it caught people by surprise. They all said, well, we'll never get worse than uh, 1930. Well, they got 10 feet worse. Mm -hmm. And it came so, so quickly 
that people were caught and they couldn't even call for help because uh, the telegraph lines were up and some of the others. But uh, mm -hmm. uh, so Paducah was sort of isolated when the storm first mm -hmm. hit. There are some remarkable films uh, shot of Paducah uh, around. Uh, and as we go through our, our talk today, hopefully we'll be looking at some, some excellent photographs uh, from the flood. Many, many, many survive mm -hmm. from this from this incident. Uh, go ahead. Well, uh, the uh, Corps of Engineers shot some footage, and so did TVA. And currently, um, I'm a, a, the advisor to a project by the Kentucky Humanities Council that we are in the process of collecting uh, interviews with people who remembered the flood. And then we're going to put those together uh, in this coming year, hopefully, and uh, uh, take the old footage that exists and colorize it and come up with a oh. new look at the 37 flood. So uh, we're two years into that project at the present time. So the, the memories, uh, it's funny how they are burned so deeply into the, the very mm -hmm. psyche of the people. We interviewed one lady. I'd always heard the story in Paducah about the baby. The baby. Everybody knew the baby. Uh, well, we had this lady come out and we interviewed her and she said, now this is my sister who was the baby. And she was there. What was happening, they were going down Broadway, they were being rescued and they were in a, one of these little boats, uh, just about uh, two inches of freeboard or something like that. And a, another boat went tearing down uh, the opposite direction and too close to them and the wake shook the boat so severely that the woman dropped the baby into the icy water. I mean, there was ice floating on the water. And the baby started floating off. And just at that critical moment, another boat was coming down going toward town, and in it was a young man who had just been released from the hospital. With, he had been in with pneumonia. Without even blinking an eye, he dived right into that mucky, dirty, filthy water and rescued the baby and his name was Tom Wilson, who later became the mayor of the mayor city of Paducah. Paducah. What an amazing story. Yes. Yeah, hadn't heard that story of the flood. Wow, wow. Well, tell us some more stories. You've collected several already. In fact, you've written about some for the Kentucky Historical Society. Tell well, yes, I have uh, I also published uh, an account of the 37 flood in the Filson Club Quarterly. And uh, then the one I really enjoyed doing uh, is in this uh, copy of the Register of the Kentucky Historical Society. Uh, it is uh, in the spring of 2004, and I had heard about this and uh, tried to get it, and finally uh, J. Sam Jackson uh, uh, allowed me to have access to his father's account of his trial during the 37 flood. Mm -hmm. They had the Jackson machine shop downtown, and when the flood started coming, uh, he tried to get ready for it. They put all of their stuff up on uh, out of the, what they thought would be the limit of the water. And he also built him a little boat. And then he was involved in things all through the flood. And in his account, he describes what happens uh, when people tried to ride the flood out at various locations. Uh, some of them, for example, went to the, uh, the courthouse, uh, hoping that you know, they could stay there. And very quickly they found out, oh, well, that didn't work because the first thing you had to do was cut off the water pressure and all the toilets quit working. And you put 400 people in the courthouse and uh, then well, tried to uh, see how they would live there. Mm -hmm. uh, there's the courthouse uh, at the time of the flood. Now that that's sits, the old courthouse. It sits on, that's where the, new, where the current courthouse is. Yes, it's the same site as the current. Wow. And uh, when he... Uh, uh, went there to look for his father. Uh, the restrooms lacked water and were getting pretty rank, as he says. And by then, there were about 300 people housed there and more coming all the time. Well, uh, as it went on, he told his wife and his baby uh, they had some uh, quarter drinking water. He said, whatever you do, don't give anybody any. He said this one woman came up and tried to, to get water by fainting and said so they wouldn't give her water. I mean, it got that critical. And uh, uh, as he goes on to say on January 23rd, he says, by that morning, there were about 500 people sheltered in the courthouse with blacks segregated from the whites. Living conditions continued to deteriorate. 
The air was now unbearable, Jackson drove, and the jailer was drunk and never tried to set any restroom or keep people from using the halls. Wow. Well, you know, life got primitive. And, of course, the irony of that is water, 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 everywhere, water everywhere, but everywhere, not a drop to drink because it was filthy drink. river water. And that also applied to fire safety. When buildings started burning, they were, nothing could be done. Wasn't there a fire in Paducah during the flood? Yes, there was. There were two, in fact. And one downtown was very dangerous. In fact, the fire chief was so severely burned that he died. Uh, and uh, right. what happened was... Uh, uh, there was carbide stored there, and they were afraid that it would explode when the water got into it. Right. And a wall collapsed and fell on the, the fire chief slaughter. Uh, so, yeah, uh, Paducah also uh, rigged up a, a fire boat. Uh, had a pumper on it. and But even so, they had the Hank House, for example, burned. Uh, they couldn't get to it in time to do anything to it. So, you know. You don't think about a fire in the middle of a like flood, that. right? Yeah. Right, and I think I, I, well, I actually have read about fires in, in, in major cities because this flood devastated Pittsburgh and Louisville and, and uh, all the, the major towns on the river. As it well, went Louisville was, not, was hit, but not as hard. Nothing was hit as hard as Paducah. When you think about it, they eventually had to evacuate uh, almost 20,000 people from Paducah. And one of the reasons for that was health concerns. Mm -hmm. They tried at first to get by by, uh, well, uh, holding up in the Ritz Hotel downtown. And if you look at the Ritz Hotel, uh, the flood got up to where uh, actually you could come in a boat and land on the roof of the mezzanine and go in through the second level of mm -hmm. the the flood. That was also to, uh, yeah, of, of the Cobb Hotel too, wasn't the the, the marquee on the Broadway yeah, side? I, was a what did I say? I, the I was talking about yeah. the... Yeah, well, the, oh, right. Well, the Ritz also was way out, but the Cobb, it got so bad there that uh, they had, the city hall uh, got flooded, and so they moved the city government for a while to the uh, to the Cobb. And well, then the, the another problem was the city jail was in the the old city hall downtown. And here's a view of what it was downtown at the time. Wow. This is the famous uh, uh, boat. Uh, that's a Coast Guard boat going by the clock. And everybody in Paducah knew the clock on the old uh, uh, City National Bank or the, uh, by this time it was the uh, Citizens Bank. And this is at a corner, third and Broadway, where there is a vicious cross current. And uh, boats, these old flat boats, didn't have keels. Mm -hmm. And so there was one famous story right at this point. If you start yourself going down this river toward uh, the river, uh, right straight ahead of you, uh, he was coming along and that cross current hit him and he, his boat went tearing to the right and went through a plate glass window. And as he, call, he mentioned, he looked up and saw that, that glass coming down like a guillotine. And he and his companion in the boat bailed out into that icy, muddy, mucky, dirty, filthy water. And here he was downtown, wet at almost zero temperature. He found a, a, an apartment on the second floor where someone was hiding out and had a fire going, burning coke. Hmm. So that it flames, uh, the smoke wouldn't show. Right, right. Because they put the city under patrol, and others got out in the uh, like this uh, shot uh, of uh, uh, Mr. Hank in his canoe, and they were uh, having an outing on the river. And of course, this was out about 17th Street. So uh, now but, that is um, Hank of the Hank Brothers Harbor. Yes, uh, mm -hmm. one of them. And here is what it was downtown. We have in the background there, there's the old city hall. So now what street would that be? Uh, that would be Kentucky Avenue uh, going by. And if you notice, there is ice in the middle of the street. The street right. was flooded. And the boat there it was from a parked uh, uh, river steamer. And they, of course, came in and helped as rescue craft. And uh, Mr. Jimmy Curtis from the old Curtis uh, Studios uh, was a crewman on one of those boats, and during the 37 flood, he was the official uh, uh, ambulance 
for rescue operations during the 37 flood. We interviewed him on this project uh, uh, that we're doing for the Kentucky. Now, Olympus on the County. topic of rescuing, I, I believe you told me that uh, uh, Mr. Walter Beasley was the unofficial rescuer of animals during the flood. Well, Mr. Beasley, in his diary he kept all during the flood, commented on what the flood does to not only humans in difficulty, but animals. He told an account of seeing a shed, a flat rough shed, and on top of it were about 20 animals. Dogs, cats, squirrels, and they all were up there living. Up the, they were all just shivering in the cold, but they were all seeking sanctuary. And animosities between <laughs> breeds yeah. didn't exist. Right. They were all facing the common enemy. How strange. And he rescued them, he and his... Uh, well, he and his brother, and his brother uh, that did. particular group, yes. Yeah. Now this is what downtown Paducah looked like taken from the Cobb Hotel, looking down toward Columbia Theater. That's going to say the old And you see Theater. the Ohio River just continues out. Uh, at the foot of Broadway there, the river's there to meet you. And it goes all the way across the skyline in Illinois, across the river. Now, looking at that photograph, uh, sort of on the lower left center, isn't that the Chief Paducah statue there? And that The Chief Paducah statue was in front of uh, the old federal building, and that is statue is it. standing out in the water up to the uh, uh, the pedestal itself. Right. And of course the uh, the building right past that is the old hotel, the Palmer Hotel. Which is one of Paducah's show which place Which was hotels. the, uh, well, the Boswell restaurant in the hotel. Right. Boswell, yes, place of course. Of course. In downtown Paducah. Now this is looking in the ups opposite direction, looking west from the, right. the Cobb. On the right, uh, by the way, the steeple got clipped at the photograph. Uh, not, it wasn't uh, it right. was complete. Broadway Methodist. Uh, but, uh, uh -huh. uh, and then there's Temple Israel right across from it. Exactly. And, and look how far out the look water just, just goes continues. on and on the and on. The river like just little, extends on yeah. out for 23 blocks. So, wow. unbelievable. And this, uh, this is 12th and Broadway. And this is, I guess, my favorite flood story. Please tell us this story. Well, Mr. Oschlager ran the uh, pharmacy there. And I think it's important to note the term reliable drugstore. It's a reliable drugstore, yes. He continued to serve the public even during the flood. Now, he had to go upstairs, but uh, a boat would row up in dire need of assistance from the pharmacist. Mm -hmm. And Mr. Oschlager would stick his head out and... Uh, the man would tell him what he wanted. He would put it into a bucket and lower it down. The man would take the quart of whiskey and put the money in there, and then he would pull it up. And on one occasion, the boat rode up. Uh, he lowered the, uh, uh, it was probably Old Crow or some uh, Kentucky brand, and the man looked up and thanked him and rode off. <laughs> After that, it was cash and carry. Yeah, I was going ahead to change his business tactics right there. But yeah. how would you pursue him? <laughs> That's true. He, we, we're pretty safe to assume. Looting was away. not uncommon, and people didn't think anything about, you know, just... What, mm -hmm. Well, I heard one account of uh, uh, Mr. Oscar Cross, who founded uh, the Boys Club. Mm -hmm. but uh, He was uh, had come back to Paducah and had not been here that long. And the black community was in dire straits. Uh, and a lot of them moved into the uh, the old Lincoln High School. Mm -hmm. uh, and now, where was that? Uh, I don't remember exactly the street. It's uh, on about what was it, Seventh? Could be, yeah. Could be. I mm -hmm. you know, I don't remember precisely, but it was uh, on the south side of town, and they were told that there was a grocery store right near there and they were given permission by the owner to go over and take whatever they wanted because it was going to be ruined anyhow. And so uh, they would go in, uh, roll over, go into the store 
and take canned goods home for them to eat. Of course, all the labels had washed off. Mm -hmm. And he told about, you know, you, you got lima beans four meals in a row. Right. Uh, you right. never knew what you were going to get. Right. It was just potluck. He also told, told a story uh, about how they, one of the supplies of, of fresh drinking water was the tanks. What, At the NC yards. Absolutely. They would row out to these these enormous, what are they made of, a redwood or something? Yes, uh, open big top. wooden uh, reservoirs that they used to fill the uh, water containers on steam locomotives. And that was clean water. And as long as that water remained, they could uh, they were instructed to use it. Mm -hmm. Now, after that, uh, the city uh, uh, has sanitation uh, department. That is, they had the two city doctors and some others. Uh, uh, and by the way, one thing there was in Paducah, uh, not like in Louisville, the white doctors were paid higher than the black doctors for doing the same work. And in fact, uh, the uh, NAACP came down to make an investigation of that. Mm -hmm. So uh, we were different in several respects from what happened in other cities. But uh, as long as the water was out of the tank, it was all right. But mm -hmm. then after that, they tried getting by by putting iodine in water. You'd boil it and put iodine. Now, there was one family here uh, who uh, anticipated that. They tried to stay in the second floor of their home on Jefferson, and the water got up into the first floor, and they could bring a boat in and to the landing. And uh, the family tried to ride it out. Uh, they had uh, uh, stored carefully ale. <laughs> and here are these kids, you know, uh, two or three girls about 12, 14 years of age were suddenly their father was bringing them a, a bottle of ale to drink. Uh, so uh, all kinds of expedients were oh, uh, tried during the 37 flood. Absolutely. Um. And here is uh, the other thing that sometimes is overlooked. The flood came up so quickly and on top of temperatures below zero, Many of the old automobiles froze up. You see one right. here to the yeah, left, absolutely. Uh, just the roof. And they would rise and fall when a boat went by. And so uh, Mr. Curtis tells that uh, these rescue boats, every time they'd see a car like that, they'd take a long uh, rod and stick it through the cloth roof so they would stick up exactly. and show them as a hazard to navigation. And, and you can see on the, well, back in that photo with the right-hand side, you can see the marquee on the uh, car. The marquee. Uh, right, the, the, there the it is, which, which is the water came all the way up. That became a boat dock when it the water got that. It became a boat dock, and the city high. officers stayed in there quite late. Also, uh, uh, they had a liquor store there, and uh, uh, one person in particular went in and raided it, and they actually would bathe with liquor. Uh, because they didn't have any clean water. Wow. So uh, now this shot is of the That's impressive. Uh, Paducah IC Railroads. At the time, this was probably the largest or the second largest railroad shops in the world. They built the 2600-class uh, locomotives uh, for the IC in that shop. And you also see the roundhouse behind it mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. uh, look at the water. This thing was flooded. Mm -hmm. And so, you know... Um, One of the stories I heard about that was, of course, the floor of that was these wooden blocks. And after the flood, the blocks all popped up and scattered all around. Well, uh, and not only that, some of the streets downtown in Paducah, underneath the pavement, had wooden blocks. Also. That had yeah. been put in in the 1850s to quieten the, the traffic going across right. the city. Right, And that did a lot of damage to streets when the water got into oh, that I'll underneath. Bet. I'll bet. Uh, this is a Beasley Monument. It is. And, uh, and you can still see that statue. That uh, building, building is still it's there. Still there. If you notice, it's up to the, uh, the, almost the roof of the first right. floor. Right. And right across from that was the old Union Depot of the IC Railroad. Mm -hmm. And uh, here is one of the this uh, is one of, typical examples yeah. of people. Now, they, this they, is on the 30s. This is on the flood ball downtown. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, tell the story of who that man is, or maybe not. Well, <laughs> uh, I can tell you four names, I think. Uh, you put out a special edition of the Paducah we did, Sun when you were working there, there. Mm -hmm. and I believe uh, at least four people claimed that that was their uncle. We did, and, and of course we got the, four names. We did, and the first call we got, we thought this is terrific, and this was you, you know jo Joe Smith and his dog uh, uh, Bill or something, and we, so we put it in the paper. Then next, no, 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 that, that's, that, that's Uncle Ed, and that's his dog Fido. We just finally gave up and said, well, it's just some guy with his dog. <laughs> 
Yeah, yeah. But that's a wonderful, wonderful picture. And this is the picture that oh, everybody remembers. Right. Uh, one view of this was taken by a photographer from National Geographic right. and appeared and brought national attention to the plight of people in Paducah. Mm -hmm. uh, Jimmy uh, Houston, uh, his widow, uh, we interviewed on this 37 uh, uh, flood project, mm -hmm. and uh, she uh, told an account of uh, how so how, how do you get a cow on, onto a porch? Well, that was the question. The cow didn't particularly want to I, go. I, I can't imagine. But the reason she had to was standing in icy water would right. deteriorate the hooves. Oh, yes. And yes. so something had to be done. And so Mr. Houston came up with a solution. He grabbed the cow's tail and twisted it mm. until the ends met, and then he <laughs> applied pressure. <laughs> The cow went up the porch. I'll bet. Now, it was much easier to get her down. Oh, sure. But they went down there every day. They fed her and watered her. Now, when the flood was over, problems still had existed. Mm -hmm. uh, this shows that. Uh, this, again, is under the famous clock on the old uh, Citizens Bank building. And when people were allowed back in, the water had not been turned on. The pumps had not been turned on. And therefore, there was no... Uh, the commodes did work. Mm -hmm. There was no toilet. And, and that's a And privy. they made these temporary uh, toilets and just opened a manhole in the city sewer system and mounted these portable potties over the top of it. And the name they gave them is, I think, rather uh, chauvinistic. They were called secretaries. <laughs> well, the first thing they decided to do after the flood was, after, after cleanup, was that we need a Build flood a wall. Flood wall. And, of course, now, uh, in our august wisdom, they say we don't, but uh, mm -hmm. um, I think that'll be prove them. They didn't think mm -hmm. we needed one in 37. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. here they are building the flood wall, and I think it's interesting to look at the level of technology in mm -hmm. 1937. These mm -hmm. people are using hand tools. Mm -hmm. Or when they were doing the levees, a lot of the flood wall is uh, levees. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, they used uh, mules and scrapers. Mm -hmm. And later in the war, they used uh, German prisoners to work. Hmm. They couldn't put the gate in until 46. Now, this is also after the this water This is went after in. the flood, uh, 38, when the river froze. And wow. Dr. Stiver's uh, family took these pictures. And if you look, you can see people way out in the middle of the Ohio River on the ice. They, someone actually drove a car across. I've heard that. So, I've uh, heard that. A great fun, yeah. uh, particularly for the younger set. And if you look, they're standing way out in the river, and there's the bank way behind them there. Good heavens. So, That's amazing. So, Well, unfortunately, we're out of time. Uh, thank you for joining us. Yeah. We can do this again sometime. I'm Barry Craig. Thank you for joining us, and we'll see you next time.